Go. Go where? To the dork table. No, to the dork table, Miss Mary, where all the dorks go. Um, dun, 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 dun. Well, no, that's the lo that's the Lone Ranger, not the Dork Ranger. Anyway, this is Flash at the Dork Table, and I got my special co-hostage today, fresh from battle. Say hi. Go on, I dare you. Tell them who you are. <laughs> they don't. You, you don't. Th you don't th think Grim and Miss Kate and Mental recognize your voice yet, huh? Well, well, for the last couple of shows, I've had my mic just die right when I was getting ready to, to go live. Sent me back to two different shows, and Grim gets on here with me and, uh, and fixes it. So, we had a good opening tonight, or well, today, without so far any problems. But I want to tell Grim thanks ahead of time because I know somewhere down the road I'll be crying for some help. And and at the Doric table, it has always been traditional to say hi to the bots and the bodies that associate, and gather, and fix everything that's broken in the RLM chat. And what uh, you want to read them, or do you want me to? Uh, go ahead. I know. It's my special gift. Yeah, I know. You, she didn't want to ruin her hairdo. Oh. Oh. Yeah, let me stall for you while you readjust your things. Uh <laughs> the no, and then overall, I can always find a way to fuck this up somehow or another. Kidnap somebody that's just a button pusher. Hey, could be could have grabbed Vinny today, and you know Vinny might have been in a mood to take over the damn RLM for all you know. <laughs> He's not messing around anymore, that Vincent. Okay, I'm trying to stall till Mary gets all set up. I can. Uh, what can I do? There she is. Uh, testing one, two, three. Oh, I I can hear you, but Grimmy wants to jump in here on the team viewer. So give me a second here. I'm opening up the team viewer for Grimner. And he'll fix this, whatever it is. I don't know how he does it. I don't think he knows. Oh, now we got dead air. Okay, wait a minute. Well, if that's the case, we'll just... I'll kill what we got and start over again, yeah? Oh, okay. Uh. Okay, letting go of the mouse right now. And let Grimner come on here and do his magic all over the Real Liberty media. And uh, what do we got going on? Oh, the dead air. They're thinking we're going to be dead air. So instead of being dead air, I won't be dead. I'll be mortally wounded air. <laughs> yeah, you might have shot me in the ass, but I've been tortured before. So what about you? Well, we'll get back to the bots and the bodies when, uh, or I guess you can start over or something. They didn't hear anything you said, you poor thing, you. Hmm. Okay, whoops. Yeah. It's the psychotropic drugs that you're not taking. See, it's this being forced to look at reality the way 
the government wants you to see it. Usually at the end of a gun or a needle. Lately, they've been pushing towards the needle. Well, yeah, because well, yeah, the, the needle, you know, when you know, they, when do, they you, do you, the needle, the needle and, and it's, like, it's like you say, you say oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I need, I need that. that. Whereas, Whereas as opposed to, to walking, walking, walking up with a gun, gun you're, going, you're going, no, no, no don't shoot, shoot me. When they come when they in come with a needle, the needle they, you go, oh, yeah, oh, yeah I, need I need that. that. Yes, they, yes are. they are. Yes, they yes, are. Yes, they are. But, but. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. And look, and look, look at, at, look at, well, like, well, last, like last night, night the, buildings the buildings and the and charities and all that other fun stuff that they've, that got, they've got named after them. After them. So it's, you know, every, you know, every time you walk by the building, the building they're, they're thumbing, thumbing their, their nose at you. Even after they're dead, you're already getting your nose thumbs. Because, yeah, yeah. Assholes. Assholes. Well, well, I'll just, I'll just. No, I'm no, just I'm gonna just going to put here. in here. Can y'all hear, hear anything? anything? Oh, oh. Oh, they, oh, have, they Grammy have Grammy and Grammy, Grammy Echo, Echo in Stereo. How fun, How is, fun that? is that? Just an, Just an echo. echo. You -hoo -hoo. And there and was there silence. silence. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I, know. I know. I was being, I was a, being rebel. a rebel. <laughs> Ah, okay. Oh. <laughs> Kate says it's kind of trippy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Kate's having fun. Yoo hoo, yoo hoo, yoo hoo. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, she said that. Oh. Oh, how fun. Well. Well, you got the queen dork here then instead of the, the king dork. And then the next show I do, there's all these glitches that cause this. And I don't get uh -huh. it. I think the internet is being tampered with. Well, and I don't have my speakers on. I don't know what that means. Okay, Kate says on. that my sound is fixed. Ah, very good. Now we're just waiting for his grim nerdness to fix me. To fix <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Many well, have you. tried. <laughs> Seeing as how my sound is fixed, I'm going to go ahead and say hey to everybody until they say otherwise. So, hi, Barman. Yay, Barman. He's that splendiferous bot. And Beetle. Hi, Beetle. I also see Grimner, who's also playing on, on Flasher's computer because Flasher has issues. 
Yay. I am looky there, the lovely Moose Goyle and Kate, who's giving us a play-by-play -play in the chat. Thank you ever so much, Miss Kate. Um, DC is also here as well as Asmodeus Asmo. Chalcedony, yours truly is here. Oh, Kate says, I'm solo and loud and clear. Uh, so, uh, uh. cool. That's awesome sauce. Um, <laughs> I think, I don't know. I don't want to be a solo <laughs> dork. Solo <laughs> dork. That's that's almost like a space ballsy kind of thing. Solo oh, dork. Okay. Um, I be Don C is also here as well as Java 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 Doctor Two. Oh, ah, Kate said. Okay, I can read. Yay! I Yay. have the ability to read. Thank you, mommy. <laughs> and type. I saw earlier in the chat that you were able to type too. Yeah, but my um, spelling sucks. Yeah, well, you know, just because you don't spell like they tell you to spell doesn't mean you ain't casting spells. But okay, back back and hey, I be Don C is here as well as Java 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 Doctor Two, Meister Brower who ran, ran well. He didn't run over a snake, but he took a picture of a snake. Um, lovely Miss Rain and Rob Woiks is here. Where's that bubbler, Rob Works? Oh yeah, that's right. I shared a video earlier about people really filling a car with smoke so maybe we don't need the bubbler today yeah. or maybe we do Rome's is here as well as miss vanna white the of the rlm channel um other dork is also here as well as z beth z and phantom cycles <laughs> is also here hey honey she's and over on the couch knitting oh she's, and you she, know what i got my knitting hi. right beside me too so or you know crocheting or whatever you call it but she's, she's over there, over yonder. She's, she's yarning. Yarning over yonder. There you go. Oh. Okay. Uh, Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, being touched by the Cyborgian noodliness. The Dork Cakes. Dun, dun, dun. Hi, Dork Cakes. And Flasher, the king Hello. of the Dorks. Gromit is here as well as JJ's, no, 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 JJ's, Kozu, and Carl Marx, the snarky one. Um, Ponder Gander is also here as well as Pom 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 Sauce and Sock Puppet and Vinny Cuss because we cannot have a show without having the multiple faces of Vinny. <laughs> That's, that almost, that made me start thinking about, I'm waving back at you, Romes. Hi, sweetie. Um, <laughs> I can see that with your Eeyore suit. <laughs> just you know, just for balance to make it correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm wearing my hippie hat today, so <laughs> which I could probably turn my camera on so you can see my hippie hat under my headphones, but that would probably screw shit up. At this point, yeah, let's not let's not tempt fate. Let's don't push any buttons we yeah. don't need to push. We got a dork table going in, in thirteen minutes. Go figure. <laughs> I know, and yeah, and I got everybody said wow. hey to in that yeah. too. Oh, you got everyone? Yeah. Oh, I my did. goodness. Isn't that a, it's amazing. Man, those it's are the... Bad. Wow. See, it's springtime, so the bots and bodies count is going to drop for, you know, Saturday in the spring. People get to get the hell out of the house. So yeah. when they do, the RLM crowd gets a little smaller. People get to break out. Yeah, I was going to get out with my weed eater, but the wind is blowing like 90 to nothing out there. And I thought, nope, I am not going to get out there with the weed eater and have it all blow in my face. You said blowing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, okay, Grim. Eh, I just hate bugging him for these little detail-y things I can't figure out myself. You know what I mean, Mary? <laughs> or not? Uh, detail-y things that you can't figure out yourself. Oh, Lord, there's lots of detail -y things I can't figure yeah. out myself. Yeah. But then it's there's like, other shit that I just go, you know what? Yeah. This makes sense to me. And what I was taught all those years ago doesn't. So I'm going to go with what makes sense. Well, you know, I, I found a comparison the other night to getting an inoculation that I thought really? the average Joe could really understand this comparison want to hear it because i'll that? bet you have been too busy to catch me when i'm on because you're working but yeah. it goes like this right this is how i see an inoculation well 
you're going to get your nose broken at some point in your life. Let me break it for you today and get it out of the way. Because it could possibly happen. So let's just eliminate it today. Yeah. That's, that's how, okay. Because what an inoculation is, is the disease that they're protecting you from. They're giving it to you. Instead yep. of waiting to see if you get it in your life, you might even have a natural immunity to it. But they're just going to give it to you. That would supersede your immunity because they inject it into your body. So they give you the illness to protect you from ever getting the illness. And people yeah. are ignorant enough. And I compared it to, okay, let me break your nose now because, hey, you could someday break your nose. Let's just get it over with. Yeah. It's like worrying about something that may never happen, but let's let's just go ahead and worry about it anyway and just take all of the time that we have worrying about what will probably never happen anyway. They call it insurance. Yeah. Did you yeah. did you like that link I sent you on the wire to, to peruse or did you even get a chance to about the inoculation laws they want to put in California? No, yes. I haven't looked at it yet because my mind is still reeling from the, mm -hmm. the uh, you know, babies have to have a hepatitis B as soon as they're born because they just might get it, you know, interact with a yeah. IV drug user or something. Yeah, somebody might rape them on the way to the, uh, the cleaning room. Uh, well, you might want to read this then. If you feel into a reading mood, jump on the California Ups the Ante on Facebook. Forced vaccinations by God and country. Oh. Just if you feel up to it, because I yeah. know it's one of your particular favorite topics. Yeah, California. Uh, whatever or California you or whatever you want to call it. it. Okay, I don't call it anything. I call it a big scam, a big hustle. We're getting screwed around by politicians. Not This isn't public. The public does not talk through representation representation tells the public what to do and they got people that think they're voting for leadership <laughs> what has everybody lost their fucking minds do you not see what we're living in here okay stop and think about this for a minute hmm. you don't trust yourself enough exactly. to make decisions for yourself <laughs> so you want to have someone else <laughs> to make these decisions for you but by golly you trust yourself enough to go into a little bitty square and either color inside the lines or the appropriate one beside a name that you think will think better for you than you think for yourself or you'll punch a, a hole in something or something along the you can't trust yourself enough to make decisions for yourself on a daily basis. But by golly, you can trust yourself enough to go color inside a line or punch a hole. Right beside the name of someone that you would trust enough to <laughs> make those decisions for you. <laughs> and then when, when shit goes wrong, this is the best part about the voters mentality, right? It's the, uh -huh. other, side, the other side's fault every time. Whoever whoever oh, yeah. does the fucked up thing, it, well, that's the Republicans or that's the Democrats. It's, well, you know, I figure voters, when you walk into that voting booth, you just gave yourself plausible deniability because you can go, hey, hey, just because I voted for them doesn't mean I wanted them to do that. They right. screwed up, not oh, me. Yeah. That... Uh, you're you're the idiot that filled in the circle. <laughs> oh, hey, wait a minute. So am I. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm that's a different I'm the kind idiot of that filled in the circle over here. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> circle over here in this show. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Grimmy says it's like women who cut off their tits so they don't get breast cancer. It's like, uh, what? Oh. what? 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 I, I don't get it. What the hell? But well, uh, that's how that's how simple-minded the individuals become amongst the herd. To not look like yeah. a fool to the rest of the herd, you have to believe the bullshit the herd believes or they're going to cast you aside. Oh, 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 darn. You know, it's like uh, I, I was listening to a Dr. Bergman video the other day, 
and uh, he was talking about how we all have cancer cells roaming freely throughout our body. And basically a cancer cell is just a cell that's got an abnormality to it. But you don't really have cancer until someone that has MD after their name or something along, you know, those special letters um, behind their name says, you have cancer. But we all have it. All of us do. It's just that it does not express itself because either our immune system is stronger or we're not exposed to the shit that other people are exposed to or whatever. So quit Diet. exposing your <laughs> diet yeah. your diet yeah because you know Quit exposing Grimner, you yourself know, and eat right yeah you know what grimner swears by what's that baking soda oh pay yeah. attention little missy or i'll well, pull your union soda, card well and hydrogen peroxide well i don't know about drinking hydrogen peroxide but if you put di um, baking soda in a glass of water and shoot it daily the, it creates an alkaline environment for your bloodstream and, and uh, cells that it can't grow in that. So if you have a cancer, it may be a cancer, but it's never going to develop anything life-threatening in an alkaline environment. It'll keep it under control at very worst. There you go. But you don't want to get your body too alkaline because that's bad for you as well. There, so, yeah, just still. a little bit of baking soda. But, you know, they've also proved that injecting um, hydrogen peroxide directly into a tumor kills a tumor. Okay, see, that's what I meant. I'm drinking it. I don't know how to do how, what I'd want to do that with. But And then there's chlorine dioxide. They've been using it to, um, to uh, totally cure malaria in uganda saw a link on it the other day they were bragging about getting kicked off of youtube already oh wow and yeah this white guy and this black guy and they're down there in uganda and they're all working together hand in hand and it turns out they just add like to a child five drops of chlorine dioxide it's water purifier and then they uh -huh. add the water put that in the water and then they feed it to the kid and inside two to four hours, everybody they brought in was cured of the malaria. Instantly. Yeah. Two to four uh -huh. hours. Boom. Well, there you go. See? <laughs> and they got booted off of YouTube as soon as YouTube picked it up. Oh, yeah. Well, and there was a doctor that, um, and I think they took away his medical license, as a matter of fact. He did a TED Talk on uh, how sound destroys um cancer cells does not adversely affect the other cells the healthy cells surrounding but a certain sound frequency exactly makes yeah. makes cancer cells implode that's why i'm always bragging about larry woods telling people if you want to know any of this stuff look for larry woods over on facebook yep larry's got some great answers for these complicated questions but he's really easy to understand and he makes makes good sense. So, yes, but he me, does. I just I don't know where do I fit in on all this. I, like Vinny, I just connect people. You need to know yeah. this, and they know it. So I go, hey, check this out. Yeah. But well, that's then, what we all do. Some just do it better than others. Well, I don't know. I've got my blood pressure story, and I got my uh, meat and circ story. So I don't know. I I think life is just not as exciting as or i don't make it as exciting as it's, as it may seem to me it's just a normal day for the shit to happen to happen nothing's it's not that big a deal it's just change it life changes you but it's like normal okay just go with it yep yep and then all the crazy oh. shit that's come of all this for the last i don't know five, it's been five years so hmm yeah See, and I've been scrolling through this morning. Uh, Lisa B. sent me a a little uh, meme, if you will, and and I was like, oh, I've got one that'll that'll go along with this. So I started scrolling through my pictures here on the computer to try and find it, and it's like, oh my lord, watching the the transgression, not transgressions, but the the uh, how much things have changed over the last like six, seven years, and oh, oi! Well, for you, 
Yeah. Well, you mean like pictures of you? Well, not just pictures of me, but, you know, different things that, because I was looking through my downloads, picture downloads. Oh, the interest and, levels. Yeah. yeah. What you see and how you see things. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, because I knew you then, I, I know that a lot of that's changed as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's been kind of fun. Kind of a fun day. How couldn't it be? Oh, yeah. You went through more changes than the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> well, you know, they say women go through the change. And so well, while I was going through yeah. the change, I really went through a change. Yeah, so. but I mean, one day you're married and, and living in one place, and then next day you weren't married and you're living somewhere else. That's a big change, you know, for most folks. they That's what I yeah. was saying is... They don't know how to just roll with it. You, you just rolled with it. As far as I'm concerned, even looking back on it, because you took on the world truth. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fun. But you and Cirque wouldn't listen to shit I said, so. <laughs> well, but I see, that giggled that, a lot. Yeah, I know. But, you know, that all kind of, it's like that whole thing of people will only see what they're ready to see. People will only process what they're ready to process. And apparently Circles and I needed to have other input, other things happen in order for us to be prepared to deal with what, you know, and, and seeing it from different perspectives as well. Because <laughs> although it was very uh, rough at the time, yeah, you know, when yeah. especially when it got swiped, um, that was pretty rough, and a lot of the shit that was out on several social media sites, a lot of the bashing that was going on, that was pretty rough. And and family contacting me and saying, "What the hell's going on here?" <laughs> it was Hurricane not a fun comments. time. No, but you dealt with it like a grown up. I thought. Yeah. You were. Well, I mean, what else can you do? Well, you can get pissed off and start doing other mean, horrible shit back at people. See, there's always a choice. Yeah, there's always a choice. But, you know, I I always, whenever I would see somebody, you know, something shitty that someone was, oh, God, here we go again. And I just, it's like, you know, I could be a snark ass and just totally drop bombs all over you. But yeah. I know how I feel. Mm. With this shit being dropped on me, and I really don't want to do that to someone else, so else, therefore yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah, it definitely shifted my outlook on uh, social behavior. Yeah, because it's man. absolutely no different on the internet than it is in face, face to face. People are oh. just as brutally ignorant on the internet as they are nose to nose. Just depends on oh, the yeah. topic keep the topics yeah. minimal and but when you start talking about shit that uh takes thinking to come to a decision those things are where all the arguments are at because we all got different indoctrinations and look at the same thing and think we're seeing it differently well we all we all have different indoctrinations and yet they're very very similar but we all take it in and process it differently then explain circle because I'm 20 years old, well, 18 years older than her. And uh -huh. from another fucking country. And our core thinking is pretty similar. Yeah. But the, everything else looks different, but we think alike. And isn't get, that cool that you, no, out of yeah, but it took you this do, long and you found someone that... Right, but that's the I, point. Is Where did she learn to think the way she learned how to think? You know? We're complete opposites socially and all these other you know comparisons except for how we think and how we see the outside world around us that's the same see and and i guess i just grew up with that because my mom and my uncle tommy both i mean opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes <laughs> to yeah. you know like okay. political views and all that other fun stuff yeah. but when you get right down to it Oh, they're the same. The person. books that they collect, um, <laughs> yeah. the the places that they like to read, the things that they enjoy doing are all very, very, very similar. But they come at it from two different directions, yet they still arrive at the same point. So, 
it's cool how that works out. I think. Yeah. That, yeah, and and I have really come to realize that that people, no matter how much they try to be somebody different on the internet, mm. their their inner who they really are still shines through. You just got to pay attention. <laughs> well, I haven't ran into that yet. Well, maybe I'm seeing it. See, that's what I, I speak a lot about that. We see things, the same thing that you're talking about, but I'm seeing it from my perspective, so I'm hearing it the way I'd say it. You know what I mean? Or not? Uh-huh. There you go. That's where there, there's so little community and verbal con, you know, conduct. We all, because we... We think each thing separately. <laughs> so we're looking at the same on the screen. It's the same for everybody. Nobody's getting a special screen on the Internet. You're looking at the exact same shit I'm looking at. So where's the difference? The, the looker, because the information's all the same. Yeah. And yet well, not. There, there you so. have. Right. Uh, tw catch 22 can't even explain it to somebody else in a fashion that really translates but there's an underlying understanding about yep yeah, it's all there on the screen but you're looking at it and you're seeing shit one way and i'm looking at it and i'm seeing it another way and it's the same damn thing so what <laughs> i'm more lost now than when you brought it up miss mary <laughs> well you know it's like it's like when you personalize your page say on uh, realliberty.org or on the old WT, when you personalized your page, you could post the same exact thing on yours as I post on mine, but there's something about the background, you know, the personalization of the page that it's almost like it, it kind of shifts the perspective just a little bit. At least that's the way I see it because, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It's really, it's, and yet it's still there. You know, the, uh, I don't think it matters. I think everybody has their own. That's the input doesn't matter. We're all going to see it, how we see things, how we're tra taught or raised, how we were pushed into what there's always a guiding thing behind you to give you a decision about something. You know, what makes one person want to be a Democrat and another be a Republican? Like they're convinced there's a difference, All right? Well, how it, how did you get to that spot in your mind to believe that we're in the United States yet this party represents this and this party represents that? No, they don't. They're both shills for these other people that you're. You have no idea what you're being, you know, victimized by. It's welcome to the duality party where you have this party or that party, but both <laughs> parties are having a party on your dime. Yeah, calling each other names while they do it so that the, pe the people that support them will continue to support them because that's what you do when you have an enemy is you support your own. It's an old game. It's ignorant. It's should, we should have grown beyond this as collectives by now. I mean, do your neighbors team up against other neighbors and have fucking, uh, what do you call them? Uh, you know, like the, San, what is that, the Stanfields and the McCoys feuds? Oh, you still have that? Hatfields and the McCoys. There you go, Hatfields. <laughs> do you still no, have feuds but, in America? Uh, at least not here we don't, but, you know, it's, <laughs> it's I don't know. Because my neighbors right now are being rather interesting. Oh, shit. I just try and stay away from it. I have one neighbor that's up the road towards the highway. And, man, when I see her come out of the house and start heading towards my house, it's like I start looking real busy. <laughs> and it's you know, still Always get your way. headphones on and start talking to yourself and just say you're on the radio. I don't like, think that yeah. would make any difference for her. Oh. <laughs> said, Sorry. Bad advice. <laughs> She's, she's, she's a different child. She's a different child. Okay. But, you know, and then I got neighbors across the road that it's young kids and they're always partying. And so got the young kids partying and raising a ruckus. Hell, I remember oh. what I was like at that age. So long as they don't destroy anything in my yard or throw their beer cans and beer bottles in my yard. What the hell do you think? <laughs> 
But then she comes over and she starts bitching about it. And then she goes, well, I'm going to have to call the cops. And it's like, seriously, you want to be dealing with the cops at two in the freaking morning? I don't. I plan on sleeping. Wow. That, Sounds like you're living in paradise. Oh, it's, it is pretty nice. But yeah, there are times when it's like, oh, just please. I, I want to mow. You Leave me really alone. Sad. I'm mowing. What's the, that? Um, the, Ameri- the Americans are living the Mexican dream. <laughs> Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, I yeah. mean that's the way the governments make it look, right? What they do is all the people that can't survive on their own uh, merit, skill, um, intelligence, they end up in America doing menial labor because they refuse to do anything for themselves where they're from. See? And then they move to another country and they reproduce and create the same mess where they're at as they created where they were from. Yeah, because you you must respect my culture. You must respect my ways. You must do this. You must do that. Well, you yeah. know, if you yeah. respected your culture and your ways so much, why yeah. the fuck did you leave? Exactly. Well, my father was, he was Mexican, but he wasn't a product of that uh, lazy side of it, whatever that became, that government thing. The government encouraged a lot of people to take a fucking free check because there was nothing else. And as that grew, and then they still have babies and shit and get money for that, too. <laughs> it was well, a you know, beautiful that's, game. Oh, I know. That's an old uh, old Milton Friedman video on YouTube. I, I, it may still be on YouTube. Hi, Six. We got a new Six. <laughs> Vinny, <'cause>, uh, um, <laughs> oh, Vinny's having fun. But um, that Milton I, Friedman video, he's... Yeah. They're talking to people in, like, um, Bronx, Brooklyn, that kind of area. And um, they're talking with a black man. And he said that he couldn't go to work because if he went to work, they wouldn't get the government subsidies, if you will. I know they're called subsidies if you're a corporation. But if you're called a person, it's called welfare. What's the fucking Same difference? thing. I don't know. That, the, he said the, that they wouldn't they wouldn't get the government assistance if he went to work. So he said they're basically paying me to be lazy. And this was all shit that thank you LBJ. That's when that kicked in. So yeah, yeah. getting rid of Kennedy made made a lot of that crap possible. That's why they got rid of him. Oh yeah. That, they the, had plans. He should have never done the money thing. If he didn't do the the silver certificate he'd probably live through his first term that had got him in the second one yeah well they were going to take him out no matter what and and i really i'm really starting to question if teddy the swimmer really was at fault with that whole chapaquitic thing i'm all i'm wondering <laughs> with all the shit that's going on now if maybe that wasn't a setup as well because they had huh. the means to drug or whatever to him and whatever then, story you're told is what you're going to believe. There you go. Yeah. We've all been yeah. through this. But so if you're, if you're like, looking to hang T- Ted Kennedy, then you're going to, whatever the story is, you're going to go with negative. And if you're looking to forgive him, then you're going to find a way to do that. And it doesn't matter any anyway. So whoop, whoop. See, and I'm not <laughs> looking to forgive anyone cause it's not, I mean, they haven't done anything, and to even you. if they had, it's yeah. it's like I the only person I would be forgiving is me because yeah. I was the one that fell for it. I was the yeah. one that set myself up for it. Yeah. So I have to forgive me. You know, forgiving them don't mean shit. But you know, it's I just I keep seeing all these different things where they set people up because either because they were thinking wrong or they were bringing out some uncomfortable truths that they didn't want let out or what have you and then you know seeing stuff about Michael Jackson I and I used to tell the jokes about what do Walmart and Michael Jackson have in common I don't know They have boys jeans half off So but um bum bum yeah, yeah, but, whatever. you know, and I used to tell that shit. And now I look back and I go, holy crap, did I fall for, did I fall Probably. for a shit storm? Yeah, sure. Because when, when uh, 
when the government wants to publicly disgrace somebody, that's usually the way they do it. And so now I even question, because I know um, it was like six months prior to all of this nastiness coming up, coming out about Bill Cosby, that he was calling out the black people and telling them it was their own damn fault that they were in the position that they were in. Yeah. And then next thing you know, here's all this shit coming out about Bill Cosby. Now, Plus, I'm he not... was trying to buy NBC. Yeah. See, that and I'm not help. saying that he didn't do something naughty. Yeah, whatever. It's not the point. I mean, it's not like all of us get, or any of us, quite frankly, you, get out of live, this life without doing something underhanded. Well, if you can live 30 years after the big incident that ruined your life, then you're lying about it. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Because, you know... You know you can always say, oh, I was a victim 30 years later when it's too late to prove anything. Yeah. It's your word against somebody else's at that point. So, mm, I don't know. I don't really care in the first place. I don't give a fuck one way or the other who did what to who. It's not my problem. Only care about what I can see, Miss Mary, and everything else is all in my head. And yet, the little hitch in that not your problem thing yeah. is that someone that knows how to put squiggles on paper and convince other people to make this a thing where they can use force to make you to comply, a.k.a. laws, mm. you know, someone else can take that quote-unquote traumatizing event and write a law about it, and then it does become your problem. Mm. <laughs> and so you just kind of, and then you kind of got to go, what the fuck? Where'd this come from? Right. And I've got but, this unique lifestyle where I'm living that supersedes any form of reality that I've ever had to exist in. It's like yeah. fairy tale land. I don't have any problems with nobody. I, nobody makes a big deal about me being here or not being here. D doesn't matter. That's not the type of society I exist in, where everybody else has to know your shit, because where I live, it seems like these people are just alive and doing their life. They're not looking for victims. They're not looking for prey. You know, prey. They're just alive and living life. Very yeah. simple, nice people, easy to get along with. And we have neighbors that blast their stuff in the daytime a little bit sometimes, but... They're younger, so the older folk just, we just, so fucking what? They're kids. Let them be kids for a bit. And when it's too loud, too late, we got a neighbor that takes control of that. And they're a bunch of guys, and they respect the woman. They go, okay, we've, we've gone far enough. We'll stop now. And without all the talk, they just follow the direction of whatever the, the rule might be at the night. Yeah. See, and to me... The loud music really doesn't bother me all that much. I mean, you know. The mess, yeah. I heard you with the mess, yeah. the beer bottles. But, you know, actually, when they got their music up loud, I, in my younger days, and still do, play yeah. my music very uh, loud sometimes. You bad, li you bad and, girl. And, you know, when, they, when they're playing their music loudly, it's like, oh, hey, I like that song. <laughs> See, and then you know so, what you should do is just be Jewish like me and just cash the beer bottles and the cans in and just call it payment for your having to put up with their music. <laughs> I'm well, kidding, Mary. Uh, actually, we do Joking. pick up the beer cans. Uh, the well, bottles I throw go. back in their yard. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you don't have it. Uh, see, yeah, everything over here that they sell, yeah, glass is not re recyclable. When I was a kid, glass was recyclable and it, nothing else existed. <laughs> they yeah. used glass for everything. But it's, when the 70s, it killed them in freight, so they'd go to plastic and shittier materials. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But yep. all the yep. good stuff that you can drink out of, you drink out of a glass, uh, you know, from yes. a source. Of, that's way better than the plastic and the uh, this other shit we got. And then the plastic that we got destroys the freaking uh, nutrition of the shit that it's carrying. So yep. catch twenty two land. We've we are so far beyond fucked 
The light from fucked may never hit us. I think Roseanne Barr said that. See, and I don't know that we're totally fucked because I think if you have the mindset that you're not fucked, then you yeah. won't be. But oh, okay, and, right, and it's right. kind of a simplistic way of looking at it. But you know, mm. I'm getting more and more to where I make my own shit, mm. and uh, I have glass jars, glass jugs, glass bottles, right. glass cups, um, or I have porcelain. I do all my cooking in either cast iron or my corning. Ooh. You know, so um, it's like ah, the rest of the world might be fucked, but for me, I'm doing pretty good. I'm growing my own food. I'm doing my own thing. I'm not using your shitty ass stuff. Okay. Right, right. Now, but should anything happen to the flow of what we're surviving on today, me mm -hmm. in Denmark or you in Kansas, mm -hmm. then that changes the game. Then you're back where the, the system wants all of us in the first place. So doing what you can is just a, a momentary daily thing until it ends. And the well, way yeah. things look, these pricks in power, they're trying to fucking hurt us. <laughs> I yeah, don't think they anything are. yeah, I don't think anything that government or their agents do is for the benefit of anything but their fucking fake bank accounts. <laughs> yeah. You know, so yeah. they can fly around and tell people not to waste fuel. Yeah. <laughs> it's your fault in your little puny car that we have oh, to go yeah. on all of these junkets sure. to yeah. these to these paradises meetings that yeah. talk oh, yeah. about how you guys are so dirty. Yeah. yeah. And the destruction and the filth they leave behind them in their wake. And then they get morons to vote them into office and brag about them for all the good shit they do. You know, I saw a link the other day that dis defined Mr. Trump as mentally incompetent to hold the office that he's holding. And in 10 minutes explained in very good detail why this doctor thought so <laughs> and he went back and dug into his childhood and his rela his relations and family and the horrible shit they did to make a monster out of trump you know, donald trump mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well that's see that now i'm starting to, this is what i tell you guys it's all bullshit to me because no matter where you sit no matter what position you hold if you hang around long enough you're going to hear the other side so you're going to get equal sides of those story it doesn't matter what side you're on you just get your ego stroked or thumped because the yeah. game is the game we don't we don't have any fucking thing to say about this game thing these people want mandatory inoculations for babies babies yeah. mm -hmm. well who's going to speak up for the fucking babies nobody no I see, Laboratory and, and fucking the, rats is what they are. Yeah, and the mandatory inoculations is just because those mothers just didn't follow that whole cultural programming shit of it's your body, your choice. Don't have that child. You know, so these survived. We're going to have to do something about that. Well, and then I saw that thing that I shared in the in the chat earlier about an abortion clinic that they're now investigating because they've already killed one woman in a, in a botched abortion, sent another one to the hospital from a botched abortion. And it's like, oh, well, this just is taking entirely too long. We've got to clean this mess up, all these dirty breeders. Let's just take out the breeder, and then that one, they won't be back. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've heard that at a Hansel a few times. Well, and it, it seems like that's what's going on. That, Or at least that's the perspective I'm viewing it from right now is, yeah. man, if they can't get you one way, they're going to try and get you another way. And that's why I just think, you know, the smartest thing you can do mm. is just say, fuck y'all yeah. and just get as far out as you can. And, and some and people what? it's easier than others. But Yeah, you know. well, that's what I've said, too, but. As small of a crowd we are, uh, Woodman went down uh, uh, to Arizona, posted a, a link thing, a little video of his backyard the other morning. It was nice. Big, I mean, panning across this whole desert with mountains off in the background. It was really impressive. And he was in the city a few, what, a year ago? And he turned no. it, everything around. No, it was more than that. Who is this? Woodman. 
Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. In Arizona. How many people do you know move from Washington to Arizona? I thought I mentioned it. Maybe I didn't. Well. Let me light this spliff butt up and encourage my imagination. See, and and you can right. make a paradise out of wherever. No, you, you know, can't. You, you can't make a paradise out of city life anymore. It's too crowded. No. See, that's, and all that's the, where all the this, drugs come in. <laughs> all this electronic everything. You know, I mean, I, I'm done with phones. I don't even have my, my old cell phone died. The battery died. I think it was uh -huh. that old. And I told Sir, well, no more phone for me. I'm finished with the damn phone. And she didn't complain or anything like that. Because she knows yeah, there's only a few places in town. I'm only going to be gone so long. Yeah. But now we don't have that uh, constant thing on the, if the internet was down, then she can't get a hold of me thing. But life will go on. Yeah. But I'm going to be a, an example of what I say, and I'm going to stay off the freaking phone. I'm not going to upgrade to a smart fucking phone now. What for? I'm not that smart. And there's nothing the world has to offer me that I need a phone to get. Yeah. So there you go. But everybody around me is so connected to these phones. They're a lifeline. It's a society thing. It's just the way it is. Can't fight it. Me, I'm yeah. visiting, so it's not my society. But it's the one I came from, too. And without Again, one of mother, these My mother and I had things, the same talk not too long ago. And she said, can you remember back before we had cell phones? And I said, oh, yeah. And I remember the very first cell phone I got for the X. And it was one of those big suitcase things. <laughs> but, you know, he worked in the yeah. oil field. And, yeah. and it was just, I mean, we only had like, I think it was like 200 minutes a month that we could use. So it didn't get used very often. But my mom, she refuses to do the smartphone. And my cell phone provider is getting a little bit cranky about it. And I told mom, you know, if nothing else, we'll just go and get you one of those little um, where you pay as you go flip phone things. If my provider won't won't carry a phone that she will use because she doesn't want a smartphone. She likes her little flip phone. And yeah, the only thing she yeah. uses it for is for calling us kids. Exactly. And when that damn thing died, the only thing I was using it for was Cirque. So I think I I think I can deal with out of phone. And we'll find out. Yeah. She hasn't complained yet about it. We've managed to get through. You know, went, like the trains were running like shit Friday for her. Oh, she had a terrible trip home. You know, and you go from a comfortable um, train ride, blah blah blah, to buses to take you because the trains are all fucked up. So we think somebody hacked into the lighting thing and jacked up all the connections. We're oh. hoping it was a hacker or something in dramatic to cause that much trouble. You know, because it fucked up the whole, at the rush hour fucked up all the tracking so that the trains wouldn't run properly. Oh. So, yeah, so when they're like that, they got to shut them down until they can fix the lights to make sure that tra they don't run into each other. Oh, yeah, because that's messy. That's messy. <laughs> huh? But and Cirque speaking of saying, messy, uh, Grimmy, Grimmy said in the chat, some people think having all those assholes that live in cities around is paradise. I hate those assholes. <laughs> oh. I, I couldn't do city stuff. Oh, I've I just, done it. I, so. I, I, well, mm. and I have. I mean, I'm okay. Biggest city I ever lived in was Colorado Springs. <laughs> yeah. But and that was too freaking big. Too freaking yeah, big. You, you've mentioned. I was that. only there for a year, and it's like, okay, I'm done with this shit. I can't. No, no. I think it's a matter of perspective. I think because you were you you were raised with what you're raised with, and uh, I was similar. I was raised in an area similar to this. You know, everything was walking distance when I was a child. I could actually walk somewhere and go get fast food or I could go to the grocery store, go to the store from my, my liquor store and get something for somebody and the bunch of little stores and all that. Mm -hmm. And here I am all these years later with the same setup in a completely different location. Yeah. And it's like time, it's like time went backward because I grew up, people were, fr you know, they were friendly to each other and you, you, you didn't know a stranger. 
Yeah. I didn't get into that shit until I was in my teens where I recognized enemy. You know, and now here I am in, in Denmark and I feel like when I was a kid, people just either ignore me or they say, hey, one or the other. It's a circle of life. And yeah, they're, and some of them are so involved in their cell phone that they don't know there any, there's anybody there any fucking way. Yeah. So they're, yeah, life isn't personal. Like uh, the negative isn't always at anyone. It just goes with them because they're involved in that little thing they're doing. And if I was on the, you know, the cell phone, I'd be the same fucking way because I'd be absorbed in my little phone. So fuck it. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Now, f- luckily, I can not do that. Some people, they need it to survive in life now. Oh, cripes. Yeah. The boss. So it's a, yeah, it's a catch-22. She has to have not only the fancy schmancy cell phone that's basically her computer. I mean, she's got a laptop computer, but she uses her phone like her computer. And now she's got a watch so that if she loses her cell phone, she can do with the do on her watch what and then she can track her cell phone find out where in the hell she left the damn thing and i'm thinking seriously you want to wear that shit on your arm do you have any idea <laughs> no the radiation no, idea. no clue clueless looking forward to 5g uh, and, and yeah. all the turmeric and bacon soda in the world is not gonna stop goddamn 5g that shit's way beyond all that it's See, a weapons. I, it's a weapons grade delivery system. It goes and through concrete. Okay. Oh yeah, it goes through everything. But I'm almost wondering if you couldn't have like a white noise sound machine that would cancel it out. Mm. That's what Larry Woods is for. Go to Facebook and ask Larry. Larry might freaking know. And if Larry doesn't know, I'll bet he knows who does know. Because who knows what how popular a question that would be? But I can't answer it. I just know that what's coming is bad. The, and me and Vinny were talking about the laws were written years ago to protect this entity from uh, being attacked in court. You can't even sue them. The only oh, thing yeah. you'll be able to sue them for is the color scheme doesn't match your drapes. Something obscure, stupid like that, that wouldn't get a ruling in its favor anyway. So you can't charge them with bad for your health or and no environmental or physical uh, arguments will be heard oh yeah they they laid the foundation pretty damn good they started with that little grain of truth and just started building lie upon lie upon lie on it you know because everybody knows they remember that little grain of truth there that yeah that's that's truth so the rest of this built on it must be true no <laughs> it's not it's not Ooh, we're it's pissing awful. grimner off with the dork table today he's all nasty and that. look at him some people think, and now he's on. I don't want any watches on my arm. Ooh. Yeah, I don't. I don't. And see, I can't wear a regular watch. I tried to several oh, times. I, I can't. And I, I can't, just don't. I can't. I mean, it's on my arm. Yeah. If I have yeah. a watch on my arm all day, I bet yeah. you within three hours, the yeah. dumb thing starts getting off time wise. And by the end of the day, the watch is dead. I yeah, kill watches. I disavow the clock every morning. Well, I, I get to slap the clock every morning. It's like, you bastard, what are you doing waking me up? That's my bladder's job. But yeah. <laughs> And then depending on what time Cirque's train comes in, I, I don't have to pay attention to the clock. And then the clock it grabs me by the balls and says, hey, come here, idiot. I did not talk to you. <sighs> I go, what yeah. is it, clock? It says, it's almost time for you to go. <laughs> Yeah. I don't feel like going right now. I want to sit here and smoke them. <laughs> you have to go. This See is you, the, Benny Kiss. This is the thing that I'm forced to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't like it, Mary. I don't like it at all. <laughs> I don't either. Oh, I it's, see this it, meme on Twitter. You want me to tell you it, what it is? I guess you're going it's, to. Yeah, I am. <laughs> it's Willy Wonka, and he says, you don't believe in chemtrails? So please tell me how a waffle pattern cloud is fucking normal. Oh, yeah. That sounds like pancakes dropping that. Well, truth or UFO. Truth or okay. UFO drops some good ones. Well, so does pancakes. And I see pancakes yes. in the chat, so I thought he might have done that. 
That's yeah. because I know pancakes, and he's he's a rebel without a clue. I'm telling you. Yeah. Yes, he. Well, no, he's got a clue. He's just. Shh, 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 shh. No, no, no. Insignificant. Oh, right. He flies oh, right. under yeah. the radar. Yeah. No, 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 no. Okay. Don't don't follow him anywhere. Just watch he's where he's. He's playing just, the game of Clue. It right, was just, Professor Mustard or Colonel watch, Mustard in the library. Watch where he goes, not pay attention to what he says. Yeah, like, he's I, went into the library with a candlestick. <laughs> yeah. I used to have a friend when I was younger that would tell me, you know, well, you, you're going to hear a lot of weird things that aren't going to make sense to you. I said, watch my feet and pay attention to what I do. Don't pay so much attention to what you hear. And that, that taught me a, a lot about life, you know, people and how they are, I thought, and still do to this day. Uh-huh. You know? Oh, it's yeah. Like, like when we were arguing in the cause days because... I had met people that were as skilled as him at deceit as he was. So it wasn't a surprise for me to see somebody that brilliant fucking everybody all at the same time. Because nobody thinks that. You go, no, 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 no. It's instant. It's like human instinct is you don't want to be a victim of that. So you're going to defend it. It's what we do. And then I got taught young how to spot that shit. <laughs> So I sound like a nut job whenever I tell people, hey, watch out for this fucker. He's going to burn you. Yeah. And experience shows I did all that complaining and complained and complained and whined and whined and whined. But it didn't matter because in the end he showed his ass. Put himself yeah. in his own, you know, there was nothing for me to say at that point. But I still did. <laughs> I bragged for a while after that. Yeah. And that's okay. But, huh? Well, it felt like a checkmate, you know. It's like, wow, we've been playing this long years of chess on this big, gigantic board across the ocean. And, you know, he made me look bad a couple times. But in the end, because it never really did anything, it showed itself. And But still at my own expense, because I come at it, instead of being a super hacker, I was super not hacker. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know, so I'm not the genius. I'm not the evil genius. I'm just a dork that can type a little bit on a computer. <laughs> but I'm no coder. And see that that was always what I found so freaking amusing. And that's that's what? where that whole projection thing came in was you were being accused of being super hacker. And it's like Yeah. <laughs> do you not know this guy? <laughs> I know. Are you kidding me? <laughs> My wife still grins when she hears that. <laughs> at the other day, you want to hear another stupid event? I pulled this one off like three days ago. I had blown up my uh, screen for mines to 300%. So when I opened it, I'm getting this text box. The whole page is one little bit of a text box. And <laughs> I, what the fuck if I... So, but I know me now. So I went took me a couple of days. I went, what the fuck have I done to this thing now? And I kept looking at it, and it's staring at me right in the face. It says 300% in a little white box. <laughs> so finally, took a little time. Look, this is how slow I am with computers. I don't know why. But it took me a couple of days. I went, ah, oh, this thing's blown up to 300% in it. <laughs> so, yeah, Super Hacker strikes again. You know, blows up screen, minimizes it in 48 hours. <laughs> so, well, yeah, I managed to minimize my screen and all by myself. And it only took me two days to figure out what exactly it was without, Sir, <laughs> what have I done this time? Well, you know, that's like that joke of the blonde that is so proud of herself because she put this puzzle together. Yeah. And she's showing all of her <laughs> friends that come over for a dinner party. And she's saying, see how good I did this puzzle all by myself. And it only took me two days. And they're going, wow, wow, that is so cool. And she said, yeah. And the box says it should take you two to four years. But um bum Blonde jokes. Help, help, help. I'm glad I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, with a blonde. See, and I tell people I have mature blonde hair because I have, and everybody that's willing to be honest, and note, yeah. you have to say willing to be honest, yeah. will admit they have blonde moments. 
Everyone has them. Doesn't make a shit in the uh, difference what color your eyes are or your hair is, or even if you have hair. Everybody has blonde moments. Mm. Hey, you know, I started a, a competition today at the grocery store. Oh, you did? Yeah, well, there's a one of the cashiers, he's got a bum leg. Uh-huh. You know, so it limits his job, whatever job he's going to probably go and do. So uh-huh. he's been working at this store ever since I got here. And then they break in the teenagers and they put them on that um, grocery store jobs. And they got this new new kid in there, and she's working across from the kid I'm talking about. He's an old, he's not old, but somewhere around 28, 30 ish, uh-huh. like that, right? So to me, he's a lot younger. But to yeah. the other kid, he must be a lot older. That that kind of arrangement. Well, yeah. today his line was a little long, so I got in the other one. And the girl is does what what Ronnie does and d- gives me my total in English. And Ronnie was paying attention, so I said, "Hey, he calls it right down to the to the tenth. And she says, "Oh, I'm doing it wrong." And I went, no, no, you're, he's just more specific about it than you are. So it gave her a reason to brush up more on her doing the numbers in English and be more specific about it instead of, "Oh, you're doing it wrong." No, 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 no. just that's the right thing. It's just he's more clear. Oh, so to you know. To be part of the learning process instead of um, a problem with my English. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean is sometimes when I'm doing the commerce in town, it works for these people like the rock hound. I went to go get some yarn today and his wife wasn't there. He was there. I forget his name. I can't say his name properly. He's Danish. But he's uh, he does jewelry and whatnot. But when his wife's not there, he does the yarn stuff for us. Mm-hmm. And and we were just chitter chatter, and I was mentioning Woody's backyard. He put it up on the on the um, what was it? Um, I think I put it on Minds dot com. Copied it from wherever he put it. He put it on the on the RLM, mm-hmm. and it was really nice. I don't know if you got a chance to look at it, but well, it was epic. And I get a chance to talk to my my guy that lives in town that sells me yarn about something he's familiar with because he goes to Tucson almost every year to go rock hunting. Oh, fun. Yeah. And now Woody's living there where this guy goes somewhere out near Tucson. And Tucson, it's a spread out huge area now. Yeah. With the city and all. But to, you know, be familiar with two people in two different places doing the same thing and have that kind of interest, it's weird for me to be here and run into that. And see, I just, I, to me, that's that's a synchronicity, and that's a that's a moment where, look at how awesome life can be if you recognize these wonderful little moments. Which, but if and speaking can, of moments, Grim said that I don't have blonde moments; I have senior moments. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Cirque didn't ask me to go to the store that he he runs to go get her the stuff that she needs, I wouldn't do any of that. I would would never interact with him. It's and isn't fluke. that cool? It's, it's just that wonderful little quirky it's why, progression. No, that's, it's normal for, that's what I'm saying is it's not that quirky. It's just odd that it, no matter where I go, I run into shit like this. Even in Denmark, I run into people that travel to Arizona for freaking rock hunting expedition. And uh, <laughs> he goes there for some big show or something. It's just wild. And, and see, I don't we know what someone... he... But, you know, I don't some... know Woody. I live yeah. in Ariz- He lives in Arizona. I live out here. We just know each other through the Internet. Yeah. So the weird part is the Dane that... <laughs> That's the weird part. Not that Woody's See, so we far had, away from me. We had me. someone from Denmark at the motel a couple of weeks back coming out here for bird watching. <laughs> no and I, I'm thinking, you know, because... For some stupid reason, we had, and I had a note when I came into work, please leave breakfast up till 10 o'clock because the birders will be coming in late for breakfast. And I'm thinking, birders? What the hell birders are you talking about? Because communication is key, and yet there it is sorely lacking at times. But um, so I left the breakfast up, and here we have all these people coming in, you know, and they're they're what you would, your atypical birder. You know, if you've ever watched any British comedy or anything like that with the bird watchers and stuff they 
they had their little vests with all their pockets <laughs> and they had the the binoculars and they had the cameras with the zoom lenses and the weird ass hats and you know they're all talking about twits and this and that and i'm going wow they do exist in real life this is kind of cool but one of them was from denmark <laughs> and they came out here because yeah. this is this is a um has the most of the lesser prairie chicken <laughs> the the biggest population of the lesser prairie chicken on the planet. Yeah, and, and they get a can, bird watcher. Yeah, yeah, and so they're starting to come here to come check out prairie chickens. <laughs> and See? I'm like, it's a bird. <laughs> well, that's why. But to them, I mean. it's a big deal. Yeah, just like to the rock hounds, the rock is so interesting, and you know what forms it, what they're made of, where they're from, all this colors and this that and the other and to me a rock's a rock a see rock. and i've got i've got a brother that is a rock hound and i have <laughs> and his oldest son yeah. actually went to college and has a degree in in uh, geology because wow. of the rock hounding stuff that he did with his dad so it was like oh my lord it's just a lot of people go oh wow that's a coincidence and I, I'm more and more. I'm seeing this as these are the synchronicities of the universe. It's the universe's way of telling you, yeah, I meant to do that. That's that's at this point in my life. That's how I'm seeing things. Is hmm. it happens too often for it to just be a <laughs> quinky dink? Something uh, has got, uh, and that's where I've I am of the belief. I know, yeah. be life. Yeah. That where you focus is what you see. And when well, you open up your focus, you start seeing more. Why Why does that sound so bizarre? That's what I think. Are see, you telling me I'm I don't, crazy? No, but a lot of people don't look at life that way. That's That's what I find unusual. A lot of people do not look at life that way. Well, they want to be told how life is, so they're not yeah. responsible for the results. Oh, good morning, it, Donna. And you know, when Ms. you gotta Donna make here. your yeah, I said moaning to her, you know, like that uh, French, the French guy oh, yeah. in uh, in hello, hello. Mm -hmm. Good morning. He butchers English or French and yeah. English, uh, um, whatever. Yeah, Peter Sellers. No. No, not hello, in the hello. Inspector Clouseau. No, in in oh. that show, English show, hello, hello. Oh, I've never watched that. Funny, it's old stuff from the 60s. It might be the 60s and it ran to the early 70s. But yeah, they were making fun of World War II. Ah. I'll, I'll, throw, a, I'll throw a little short link of Hello, Hello up on the RLM feed for the world to endure. It's ah. the, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was about a, a cafe in France during World War II. And uh, they were fighting them with the resistance against the Nazis. Ah, uh, just slapstick, uh, kind of hmm, dry humor, I suppose. But I will show you a link here. Uh, but it's not like like the American stuff was uh, really bad. This stuff is really bad, but it's really funny instead of just stupid funny. Yeah. Yeah, because there's different levels of stupid funny. Some things are funny because they're so ignorant, and other things are funny because they're just stupid. Yeah. There you go. So yeah. I'm going to post a uh, short link for you to, it's like six seconds. Oh, okay. oh shit. Ooh, I, stupid didn't, I didn't mean to play it, <laughs> but this is, <laughs> this will get you if you want to see the show. This will get you to the show, to, uh, to a link. You know, give you the name and all that so you can find it. Uh, oh, well, you did the vaccine thing. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to. I got the wrong one. Hold on. I do yeah. that all the time. Wow. <laughs> that's that's when I pull out my Urkel. Did I uh -oh. do that? <laughs> when, I pull, when I pull out my Urkel, my wife goes, Hey, what are you up to, mister? <laughs> You're not supposed to water the plants while you're doing radio. <laughs> uh, 
Hey, <laughs> speaking of plants, she got uh, some aloe vera plants. Uh huh. Right? And I'm trying to be all Mr. Creative because I don't I don't know what I'm doing with plants. Right? Mm-hmm. You figured that part out. So she gets this uh, really nice looking red vine, and what I made the mistake of doing was putting the both plants in the same planting box. It's about oh. a two foot box. Mm-hmm. And I didn't understand that the vine would attack the aloe vera and strangle them from the bulb. And it grew right to it. And that's what it was doing. It was strangling the freaking aloe vera plants. I had to straighten out know, like a, like a guard. I had to go in there and save them. Oh my. Yeah. Transplanted the aloe vera plants into their own little pots and, Saved them from the dreaded vine that was going to strangle them. Mm-hmm. 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 I'm a I city understand. boy, Mary. This is all new. Come on. I grew up, you know, I grew up burning plants, not saving them. <laughs> you know, my idea of cultivation was, hey, can I roll that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if I could roll it, it was cultivated. If I had to eat it, it was vegetables. You know, or fruit. Uh-huh. So, nah, that wasn't what I was interested. I was interested in the shit that was again the law, baby. <laughs> you know, and me and me and Moose had a debate about that, and I tried to tell her that my side, how I see this, how the the people have been so beaten by vicious, violent potlaws for so freaking long that it's going to take a lot of people a lot of years to get over that fear of being arrested for pot and she says now a lot of people have already already changed their mind and they already see it that i don't think so but see the beauty of interpretation you know because i'm far away looking at america as the number one place to spend time in prison if you live there you know, if you're ah. visiting, they're not so hot on punishing those from abroad but man if you're an if you're a citizen they want you in prison yeah. Because they yeah. got you on the stock exchange making those bankers some big fat ass chicks because they get paid for every bit of it. Transporting you, feeding you buildings, security. They got their greasy freaking grubby fingers all over every dollar. Yeah. Did you know that Oregon sued or uh, the state, the state prison system sued the state of Oregon for not keeping the prisons filled. I don't know what the judgment... I did not know that. Yeah. There was a big thing about this a while back. I don't know if they came to a judgment on it yet, but I remember the case being open. And you know how Admiralty Court is. Mm Mm-hmm. But these things are real. We're chattel. Dits and blips and little squiggles on screens to other people that don't even care we're here. Yeah. Pretty much. They make money off us whether we're alive or dead, Miss Murray. How do they do that? Uh, well, we allow it. Is it magic? It. Is it magic? Or it's, it, it what? It's, it's fairy it's, dust. Is it implied consent mixed with a little thug, some jack boots, and a few guns? You know, because I hear a lot of big talk from all these gun-loving people out there in the world. But you know what? I never see. I never see links to anybody that ever resists these fuckers and lives to talk about it. If you resist, they will shoot you. Yeah. I seen another. I seen another link of a couple in a car getting shot at. As the cop walks up, the window was up. Mm-hmm. So you couldn't see from the angle the cop was filming himself at what was inside the window. But they claimed, of course, that they were being drawn on, so they shot to kill first. But they were walking up so aggressively, it was like, wait a minute, you're Superman in one respect, but you're defending yourself in another. How can it always be both both answers to the same question? And see, I just see, uh, if you're in such fear for your life all the time, why the fuck are you doing that job? Why did you know. even sign up for it? If you're that damn afraid, you should be in therapy. Uh, and it's the men that say it, not the women. The women are yeah. all very strong. They want to kill you. They will kill you and say, sorry, you should not have got in my way. The men, oh, I was afraid for my life, so I shot them. 
Yeah. What? Yeah, the women are usually, I'm ovulating. <laughs> Masochistic pastor. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you made me bleed first. I hit my period when I saw that face of his, so I had to shoot him. Yeah. I think yeah. that would hold up in an admiralty court. I, was I think bleeding, it would, too. So I thought he should be bleeding, too, from the same <laughs> spot. Slowly. Men should learn uh, to be more uh, empathic. Uh, Damn it. I, You know, yeah. I got to admit, that is something about females that's usually clear is when they're not feeling up to par. <laughs> no special days of the month. There's tells. Yeah. Yes, I don't know what are. it is. Yep. Mm-hmm. Go figure. And it doesn't take much to notice. So when you're in public and women are grouchy, just expect they'll change their mind. Give them a few days. <laughs> yeah. Never mind. It's it's a deep subject. Ah! <laughs> you're I was, so funny. I was smashing on prisons and I went to pussy in 10 seconds. He's doing a pee-pee dance. <laughs> Me? No. No, no. <laughs> no, uh, prison to pussy. Pee-pee. Uh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> but we're, see, on it the Real Liberty. Table. True, but on the Real Liberty Media.com chat, all the greatest thinking minds of the 20th century have gathered to try to figure out where we went fucking wrong. I've narrowed it down to being born and still be in here. One of those two things caused what's going on right now. See, you survived the abortion, <laughs> and so therefore they have to do something. My mother would never have, in a million years. Are you kidding? I know I was one of those uh, planned babies. They did you on purpose. And then my brother too. And oh, then when man. they realized, and then when they realized where they had gone wrong, they stopped. And said, well, "No, no, no, no more of these little fuckers. This is enough. <laughs> <laughs> Quit while we're ahead." Jeez. See, and mom said I was a pleasant surprise because they'd had four boys and they finally had a girl, and it was like, "Yay!" Yeah, and our generation has that little added extra of having been um, asked for, you know, wanted, expected. Yes. Intended, not, oh, well, I was out one night with your mom and she got fucking pregnant. So here we are, you little bastard. <laughs> and Go get yes- me another beer. <laughs> yeah, and see, yesterday when I was talking with my uncle yeah. and we were we were just bantering about all kinds of shit. And, and um, I had told him about one of the gals that I worked with that, you know, she just had a baby, and she and she and her honey don't plan on ever getting married. They're just going to cohabitate. They see no reason in going through the legal rigmarole of asking the state for permission and getting an actual license so that they can spend the rest of their lives together or the rest of however long they want to spend together. And he said, you know, there's, I really see no reason for getting married. And I said, yeah, but, you know, they used to do the old shotgun wedding stuff. And he was telling me about one of his classmates that didn't find out until they were in their 30s that their grandparents was a shotgun wedding because grandma had the baby and her brothers went to from Kansas went to Ohio to bring back the guy that got grandma pregnant and he had to marry her. And they, when it was their 65th wedding anniversary (laughs) is when my uncle's classmate found out, wait a minute, because my dad turned 65 three months ago and you're just now having your 65th wedding anniversary. (laughs) It's like, Whoa. So it's, I don't know why that came up, but you know, it's just, I that guess, because you were squirrel moment for you. Well, no, because you were saying that like we were in our generation, we were intended. And yet there were still moments way back in the day where it wasn't necessarily. So basically in the long run, what I'm trying to say is humanity hasn't changed a whole hell of a lot. You know, we still have the same problems that 
they were going on. It's just now they have more technology to bring them about faster. So oh, and a lot more people. It's yeah. The same. The ratios. It's, it's like feeding a rat or feeding an elephant. You know, in the lifespan, it's going to per capita eat the same amount of food relative yeah. to its size and its life length. You know. Yes. But but people see the elephant as so much more. Well, it's all perspective. It's the same yeah. thing. But we've got all these man-made shortages that we've been raised with and stuffed down our throat, misrepresented. If you, if you don't understand the derivatives market, then you don't understand that there's no such thing as a shortage. That's what I think it boils down to in plain five-letter language. Yeah. Well, maybe not five-letter, but, you know, five-cent words. I don't yeah. think derivatives market is that above everybody's freaking head. I think it's the, the stories behind what they truly are and how they affect the prices of what the, the products we buy. And it gets a little complicated, but only if you're hmm, only if you're real statist and you're not willing to look at the shit your government does in order to get their way with a foreign country. See, basically it comes down to it's all about the sales pitch. Mm, well, it doesn't really matter what the government tells us. We're going to get what they give us no matter what. And the stories are always bullshit anyway. So who knows what these lying thieves are doing? It always gets exposed later, so why trust them today? You know, n Trump doesn't have anything I want. Still, two years it's been, right? See, and I don't... And, you know, when you were talking about that video of the the doctor that had all of these reasons why Trump is not fit to serve. Yeah. There was a, yeah. there was another doctor during Dangleberry's reign. Mm -hmm. I said terror. the same thing about Dangleberry probably, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Exact same go. thing. But actually I really think that they are perfectly suited to serve. Look oh, right, at the right, position. Right. Look at, what, what look they at what, do. yeah, they are perfectly suited for that position. Right. With no so, conscience, no guilt about any of the results of these decisions. They just live their life and wave on freaking uh, airplane ramps at the crowd behind them like nothing's wrong. It's I'm, terrible. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to make a blanket statement here. I think people mm. that are involved in politics and want to make a living at politics mm. lack any form of empathy, mm. any any real conscience. They They may say that... Oh well, I have a conscience. I feel bad. That's I the get public accused of face. That. I, I get accused of that. But there is a difference between you know, and I, that's where I think people don't really get the whole concept of being empathetic towards another or having a conscience. Because someone that has a conscience, yeah, they're gonna do shit that ain't right. They're gonna do hmm. stuff that's like, oh man. I probably shouldn't have done that. That's screwed up. Oh. <laughs> but they don't they don't go out of their way for the most part to because they're bettering themselves. It's a dog eat dog world. By golly, I'm going to do this because it's for my family. That's the story that they tell <laughs> themselves. Because <laughs> it's it's for the greater good. That's the story that they tell themselves. But they they don't believe it any more than anyone else that well and yet mm -hmm. they've got the public believe in it because they're such they're such schmoozers that they mm -hmm. you know they not only convince the public they're convincing themselves when they say this bullshit so yeah. i think i think every damn one of them that's in politics as a profession yeah. lacks any sort of empathy Ooh, real empathy deep. i know it's a blanket statement but yeah. I don't disagree with it. I would. Would you honestly? Would you want me sitting what six thousand miles away from you, give or take, right, making your freaking life decisions for you based on my personal knowledge? No. No matter who I represented. No. Me neither. So why would see? That's what I mean. Is where does all this brainwashing come from? Where Trump. Um, fed st Trump state that wasn't the design the design was the state was in charge of itself now the federal government's come in and they want all these laws enforced based on what they can take from you 
This is a land grab, freaking monopoly, bullshit scam. We're getting fucked, all of us. Yeah. So the sooner you just admit that this whole thing is a big fucking joke, it's a scam to fuck whatever they can fuck out of whatever they can get, the easier it is to really cope with it. And then you're not really so much a victim of this goddamn voting bullshit. It's no, there's nobody voting for anything. The elected do not consider public opinion in their decisions. They tell you so. Yeah. Yeah. Your your opinion doesn't sway them one fucking bit. The dollars they get from their freaking support does. And if you're not a corporation paying them, then you're not. They call it lobbying. It's just bribery. Bald face lies right to your face. And you call that freedom. You wonder why. I'm t Since see, I got out of there by a fluke. Never went back by a fluke. I didn't plan any of this. But I'm yeah. sure glad I'm not there now. Oh, yeah. Because I, I see America in a way that if you're in America, you're not probably not going to ever see it that way. Well, probably not. A lot of people probably won't. Yeah. No, no. Because I, I drink with Danes that mock um, Trump. And I drink with Danes that uh, admire America at the same time. But not the government. And see, that's that's the disconnect. That's there are so many people that think, well, we're America, the government, and everything. And it's like, no, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. I consider myself an American because I was born in this little place with the imaginary lines around it. Hmm. I consider myself a Kansan because I was born in an even smaller place inside that bigger place with the imaginary <laughs> lines around it. I went to the top of Pikes Peak. I paid the quarter to look through the glasses, and they said, you can see Kansas from here. And I, when I stepped away, I looked at the tour guide, and I said, I didn't see no dotted line. And they kind of had that nervous laugh. I was busting a gut. I thought it was funnier than hell. I thought I was being quite witty, but apparently I made them extremely nervous because everybody else went dotted line, dotted line. It's like, yeah, I planted a seed there. People are going, wait a minute, wait a minute. But, you know, it's people do. And yet these are the very same people that say, well, I can't trust myself to, to make decisions for myself on the big things. So I'm going to trust myself enough to fill in a circle or punch a hole in a piece of paper so someone else can make those decisions for me. Bass uh, Ackworth's crazy ass thinking. Okay, well, speaking of making your decisions for you, Rob Works posted, Vaccinators in Pakistan, gun down. Local vaccine skeptics say our children are healthy. And it's printed up by government slaves on the reallibertymedia.com chat. That was my wow. interruption. Thank you. <coughs> well. Whoa, drinking some little water me. there, Miss Coffee Coffee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't breathe. Well, breathe. Breathe. Yeah. Yes, one is for breathing, the other is for swallowing. Please yeah. stop confusing the two. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The, the other day, you know how I always tell you, I'm really not much of a celebrity fan. Uh-huh. Okay, well, I know a few names, and there's a few musicians from my day that I, I think were incredible. But uh -huh. I don't look at the musician world for political influence. Well, the other day, I seen Roger Waters had a, a like a 10-minute link up about some interview he was doing. So I thought I'd watch it and check him out and see what he's got to say. Mm -hmm. Before I pass a judgment, I just been avoiding it till this the other day. Uh huh. And wow, I agreed with what he said, but that doesn't mean that what he's saying is going to change anything because the people that are really making the, the writing down what gets enforced are not telling us about what they're doing. We get this other layer of bullshit in, that we see, and it's behind a sales them there's pitch. Yeah, yeah, and behind them there's these other pricks that are doing what they fucking please making because laws so they that you fed can't those other ones a sales pitch right so i listened to this roger waters talk and he's he's a bass player from a rock band but well he was right about his input and he made me think about uh, like branson in england and that new idiot elon musk they put these or what's that other idiot kid from the, the rockefeller kid in uh, facebook uh, gold goldsberg or What's his no fucking clue. name? 
the Facebook kid. Everybody hates him. Oh, oh, Zuckerberg, sucky. Zuckerberg. Okay, there you. Go. You don't know. You subscribe to their shit. Anyway, I, I can't remember their name because I never use them. But it struck me how correct I must be to look at these business frauds the way I see them. Their stuffed shirts put in front of us to. Follow these idiots. They know where they're going. And every fucking time you follow where they're going, this last idiot, this musk moron, is going to the fucking Mars. They, they, so can't, find, they can't find water or build a fucking wall, but they're going to go to goddamn Mars. Are you You, you know where he's going? He's Nowhere. Going to, he's going to Greenland. Crazy. <laughs> uh, it does, yeah, probably. But <laughs> Or Norway the, or wherever well, the hell it is that they film that shit. Right. But yet they've got such a great audience of believers. It's like a religion. Yeah. It's like it's government. Just, they're very good at that sales pitch. You know what the difference is between a politician and an all-star wrestler? No. The uniform they wear to work. <laughs> yeah, the uniform. Yeah, the suit and tie. Wow. That's yeah, really you know, the only difference. Cirque works for a, a insurance place, right? And uh -huh. they have these annual things, and I get invited, and she always says, no, I really don't want you to be fighting with these people. <laughs> <laughs> so we probably shouldn't go together. You'd be, I'd be miserable, and I have to get all in a suit and pretend I I like banking and you know finance and no uh, all the things I despise. Mm -hmm. So we've just made a vow that uh, if she goes at all, she it'll be because she has no way to get out of it. So it's funny. My wife uses me as an excuse to not have to go to the things that she doesn't want to go to. Awesome. And it, yeah. And I'm cool because it's like, yeah, blame me. I don't give a shit. I don't speak Danish anyway. But <laughs> not speaking Danish is a whole lot nicer than he probably would argue with you bankers. Yeah. So let's not, in, you know, let's not have an, an international incident at a freaking uh, business convention. Yeah. By bring bringing the long-haired hippie idiot that would, you know, get drunk and start trouble. Trouble. <laughs> there you go. He'd be stirring the shit pot. You do Man. realize he who stirs the shit pot should have to lick the spoon. I'd be the chihuahua all over that banker's leg. He couldn't kick me <laughs> off. Yeah. <laughs> Please shut him up. No, I'm not done yet. Banker, hey, why don't you tell these people how you make a loan, mister? You know, just <laughs> slap them right upside the fucking head with the truth in front of their peers and watch them cry. Yeah, so, but you, you'd be surprised how many of them actually do not know. No. Yes, I, I know that. Don't care. I, one of my best friends back in the States, when I, before I left, uh, we were helpful in get her getting a, a license in real estate and she got her license and she was making a living selling real estate and all that, but had no concept about how the loans were created. Uh huh. And when I would try to tell her, no, I don't want to know any of the politics, about that, but leave me alone about that. And it's just a happy salesman. Don't give a fuck kind of woman. You know, what do you do? Not everybody is geared up for the reality the way it truly is. They got to live in their fantasy world the way they're happy. And if you're friends with them, you got to give them that room or avoid them, one or the other. Yeah. Not talk about certain things, things like See, that. A lot of people just don't understand that or grasp that concept. You know, you have the options there. You can either still converse with them and try and, you know, try and drop little breadcrumbs every once in a while and help them get. You know, kind of <laughs> sort of start getting a clue, or no. you can avoid them. I, yeah, that's, and that's, that's what something I do. that so many people just don't realize. They think they, I have to get in their face. I have to teach them. What? What if they just aren't ready for what you're dropping? What if they don't want to hear your little truth bombs? Let them go about their happy little imaginary world and. You go about your happy little world yourself. Right. You and it doesn't interfere bombs, can, with. Yeah, no, can, no, 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 no. I'm talking about completely no, no crumbs. This is going to sound like a made up story. The girl I'm talking about, we used to drink together. She's a buddy of mine. One of uh -huh. those kind of things. Anyway, one night we're out having a drink. 
couple of us. And I look up at, at we're playing um, Jenga. And I look uh-huh. across the table at a absolutely fucking nowhere, and I just told her, I just had a flash of you being pulled over by the police for having a taillight out in your car. And you've been drinking, and the cop's going to say that to you. And then I went back to my game. Uh-huh. A couple of weeks later, I get a phone call. Lou, I just got pulled over by the cops, and the cops said I have a broken tail light. Don't ever tell me what you think you see ever again. <laughs> 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 but we're good friends. I helped her get her license in real estate and whatnot through other friends and this, that, and the other. So, you know, but... That was what she said about this. She said, don't ever tell me. If you see th- think something, keep it to your fucking self. I don't want to ever know. But That's nothing happened. That's you're a prognosticator. The, the, but I never finished the story at the time. When I told her that, I didn't finish it. I said, but nothing's going to happen. And then she says, that, well, he left. let me go this time. He says, if I pull you over again, next time you're going to jail. Yeah, they always got to use that. You're going to go to jail. Well, she was drunk driving. Ooh. That was the whole point. She had the damn alcohol in her breath. She would have blown a fucking enough to go to, to get arrested. But for whatever reason, the cop just let it go at the broken taillight and didn't fuck with her about the drinking. Dang. But I called the I called the first part of it, but not the second part. But I didn't think any I just felt like telling her. It wasn't like you're going to jail. It was like, "Ah, but you'll be all right." And I don't think I said that part at the end. So when it happened, she was all mad at me. Hey, don't you ever do that again. <laughs> and we were close. When her two-year-old daughter, she'd bring the kid over, and she'd come over to visit or whatnot, I let her two-year-old kid play on my drum kit. Oh, there you go. Yeah, three people touched my drum kit, and one of them was two years old. So that's, you know, that's the kind of friendship that I have. When I got a friend, I, I share my stuff with their kids and, you know, it make people feel welcome. Well, it's just the internet where, be. yeah, the internet where I can be a selfish prick living in Denmark and I'm all happy. And that's how do you play that down? <laughs> it's going to sound arrogant and egomaniac, no matter how you put it. You know, because, I was having that discussion this morning about selfish because hmm. I was talking with the farmer and and. Uh, he had said something about he was being selfish, but he really enjoyed like, I don't know, something that I'd fix for breakfast or whatever. And uh, I said, you know, have you ever stopped to think that maybe selfish isn't always a bad thing? That maybe being selfish is taking care of yourself first so that you will be capable of taking care of or helping <laughs> others. And yeah. I said, but for some stupid ass reason, things got twisted around to where when you hear the word selfish you always think of negative yeah it's not always negative but no, man can't be. and self that's, preservation yeah you know yeah. and there there's all of this i really think that's part of the mind fuck that we're dealing with here is they have yeah. the language is used as a tool against us well you selfless know? is a choice and a balance i would think there's a time to be selfless and there's a time to be selfish. Yeah. It's about, uh, you walk it, you know, you make your choices as you go. Sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. So what? Life changing is what you want it to be, you know? Come on. Oh, yeah. I've, I've lost as much as anybody else in life and I'm still breathing, you know? Because whatever you judge your, your winning or losing by is what's got your attention. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Therefore, if I pay attention to my wife and my daily life, well, then my past, whatever bad came of it, that would just help me get where I'm at. Yeah. But most people are too consumed with other things that really don't matter. Like wars about oil and Jews and Arabs and niggers and spicks and pansies and all this, you know, outside shit that, what the fuck does it matter in the How long run? How did flowers get into that mix? flowers pansies oh i was trying to be nice not saying fag but i knew i could get you yeah (laughs) you know like when i'm down at the grocery store occasionally there will be a gay couple both genders i've seen both over the years Uh and the people that are around don't make a big spectacle out of what they do the only way you know is by experience by seeing that over and over you recognize what you know yeah. 
But the people that are doing it aren't like flamboyant freaking queens or wearing plaid fucking, sh you know, ve uh, shirts with a chainsaw. And No, they're just gay and they're just living their life. But yeah. Where I come from, there's all these freaking, uh, what do you call them? The, the attention whores that have to be in the limelight about whatever they're fucking doing. Oh, yeah, I had chili proud. for breakfast this morning and I suck four dicks and I feel so good and all that kind of shit. Yeah, well, loud and proud people. By God, you'll pay attention to me because I'm important. I just said so. The bigger the city, the more that crap you get by design. This is what I mean. It's mm -hmm. The smaller you get, the, they're going to still have people that strike the individual as odd and whatever normal there is to that person. But they don't shove shit in your face in these little towns like they do in the big city. It's refreshing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't give a shit what other people do. I care what they do to me. What they do to each other, I don't care if you rape a cat every night. That's not my business. It only matters if it's my cat. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, remember the yeah, you guys nailed me on the cat when he was a prowler. But Cirque cut his nuts off, so he don't he don't fly, he don't fly out no more. He sees a house cat now. Ah. Yep. Yeah, he's now he's gutless. He lays around, and play, you know, scratches the carpet. And, Acts like a kitten. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, man. One night, that poor fucker come home with a broken paw. And, okay, and I didn't take him to the vet. I let him. I let it set itself and deal with it. And he walks, mm -hmm. and you can see where it was broken to this day. But he walks okay. But Cirque, nah, she she had to take him in and change him. <laughs> now he, he's like Vinny. <laughs> it's like having Vinny around at your feet. <laughs> But, well, you know what I mean. Uh, Vinny can't sit still. I'd be talking on the radio with Vinny's on the program, and he's over there researching the next thing he's going to talk about. He don't pay no attention to me. He's going to tell you something. <laughs> it's ah, uh, it's radio. It's too much fun. You yeah, can't make this shit up. But, you know, Vinny's going to try to get a, a ride-along with his buddy, the sheriff. Oh. Yeah, apparently... One of his neighbors, he's got some new neighbors in, and the boy is gone. The girl's by herself, and he saw the cops jacking her up. And then they searched her, and they brought dogs, and they finally found a bag of uh, what turned out to be it was detergent in a baggie. Oh, you know? yeah. So he wants to confront the police about why they're treating this girl this particular way. Vinny, and his, that's the way Vinny is. Yes, it is. Yes, it there is. There you go. The good side of any is far better than the bad side of any. There you go. Whatever the hell you would call that. Because some people get mad when uh, me and him do radio together. They don't listen. <laughs> I lose people because of it. Yeah, well. But beyond everything else, this is just a small-time radio thing. And me and Vinny have been friends for a long time. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to... Uh, if we work through the shit we got through because I got pissed off at him a couple months ago about something and uh, we got through it I said well okay that's behind us now we go on so we go on and we're trying to show people you know you can have disagreements with your partner or whatever whatnot and get mad and be all stupid and act like a dumbass and get over it and go forward and eventually you're going to even forget what the arguing was about yeah because it wasn't important enough to end the friendship, then it's not important enough to remember what the fuck happened. Because if you're mad at somebody for a long period of time to the detail and you know exactly what they did to piss you off, then you're still mad. <laughs> you didn't let go of it. Yeah. Somebody is carrying a load, baby, and it smells <laughs> like shit. <laughs> you know? And these are the topics that I can talk to alone with Vincent one-on-one -on -one and come to terms with and go, well, okay, we can either be childish and be stupid and act this way, or we can get beyond it and go forward and see what happens. And yeah. that's the record we want to leave behind us, you know, is whatever we go through is happening for real. It ain't made up. We're doing exactly what life brings us. And if I overreact to something, then he's either got to figure out what went wrong or not, and he chose to. Because I got pissed off really bad at him for some. Yeah, I don't. Uh, Vinny's just Vinny, and I like to tease him because Vinny's got multiple personalities. 
<laughs> I spent a lot more time. It's like my second marriage. I spent a lot more time. It's like my illegitimate son. You know what I mean? Oh, Lord. Yeah, my illegitimate son, Vincenzo. But, yeah, well, he's not that much younger than me, but enough to where I can see where he's not paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to well, know shit. Mary, but that's why I'm. Well, sometimes when you got your mat on, or it's even, not even really a mat, <laughs> it's just yeah. that your yeah. righteous indignation going. And man, you've you've already shipped it, shifted into overdrive on your righteous indignation, and you're you're so focused on that righteous indignation that you're not mm. seeing what people are trying to express to uh-huh. you. That pretty much lets you know that hey, I get where you're coming from. <laughs> Quit being all righteous. The kaboom shit needs to stop now. But <laughs> Yeah, but I let him go until he gets tired and goes to bed. Well Yeah. Just like yeah. anybody else. Except Goober. I can't I can't do Goober very long. I get bored of him quickly. Well, bless his heart. He But I can handle Vinny uh, Jose, that was another one. That guy just drove me nuts. Uh but... well, Jose was another one of those righteous indignations that he wore it as a as his cloak, his armor. Well, like, all right, but what are... I mean to to me, I see the the negative that I see in two lights. One that is is if I see any more of that, I'm going to type something even stupider. So let's do an Iggy. And the other one is, oh, I don't agree with you, so I'm just not going to respond or say anything to that on the screen. I just let it go. And some people like Goober. I can't. He's so dramatic. He draws me into that every time. Like a, it's like my indoctrination. Like Vinny's thing to to fight for the side of good and niceness, I like to spar with a moron every now and again. It just in the end, I always come out looking like, "Why did you do that? You should have left that guy alone. That was rude." So well, I'm, I'm gonna not do it any. Okay, but I'm gonna step back from that goober guy for it. Well, it's kind of like playing, you know, a cat playing with a mouse. It's, it's, <laughs> You know, it's, it's fun for a while, but then you finally just got to go, okay, if you're not going to kill it, fucking walk away. Okay? Just, mm-hmm. and, and I do. An, yeah. I, yeah. I tell you what, when those, when stuff starts getting like that, unless it really gets under my skin, for the most part, I just walk away. It's like, I, this is not my dog and pony show. I am not yeah. going to get involved. But man, once, if it, if it tweaks me or if I'm in just the right mood, I'll jump in <laughs> with both feet and I will yeah. rip snort and yeah, until I get my point across and not necessarily because they acknowledge I got my point across, but because I have said what I came to say and then it's like, mm. okay, I am done here. I have moved on. <laughs> it's all that, it's all it is. Yeah. Uh. Uh oh, <laughs> Grimner's putting up funny link, uh, pictures on the RLM. Sorry. Oh yeah. Anyway, oh, the mind thing. I was gonna click yeah. on that. Thought, Go ahead. Okay. You'll. I'm in you'll a streak. He's a funny Thanks guy. For your He's very not funny. Your... <laughs> yeah, not you. <laughs> Everybody but you, ugly. You ugly boy in the middle. Wow. Isn't that sad? You know. Remember when when we were kids and cops were normal and human. Now look at what they become. Ugh. And that is all part of the plan. I know. Well, we didn't talk about the plan today very much. I don't really know what we did. We just garbaged about shit like we do on the dork table. We prattled. Had a little fun. Killed a few hours on a Saturday afternoon because you got stuck in the house. And that's what the dork table's here for for you, Mary. You know? Yeah. And that's why I timed it because if there's stuff for me to do around here, I can always get it done before... Um, well before I need to do a dark table on a Saturday. So I'm never inconvenienced to do my dark table. Yeah, see, and the dark table is fun. It is and a every lot of day fun. every day is Saturday for me in Denmark, so yippee dippy ah. dippy. That I don't know. I can't read the Danish calendar. I just read the numbers. I don't know what the days mean. See, you're like my mom then. Every day I've, Saturday. <laughs> I've tried. Or I've see, tried reading. What? Well, she'll call me and she'll go. Do you have radio today? So I just tell mom. Mom, every day's radio day. It's okay. It's okay. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you have radio today? <laughs> I, I, I. She's anyway, so funny. That brings us to the end of another exciting dork table with my special guest hostage this week, Miss Mary, from the Rocket Chair Podcast. Yay! You want to you want to do the lineup or I uh, do the lineup? I'm we gonna let you do, do the lineup because I'm on I'm on the other the computer lineup. and I don't have that. Pulled uh, up. I got the lineup memorized in my skull, except for the Vinny thing on Friday. So I usually forget that. He, yeah, but see, I'm cool. like a month and a half older than you, so. <laughs> I know we we're gonna we're gonna uh, hit the big one this year, my friend. Yeah. The milestone, the six and O oh for the world to go. Oh, look at those two old relics, my friend. Yeah, but you know what? Since what? since it's got a zero behind it, that means it's not adding <laughs> anything. So we'll be six hey. years old. Maybe to add another, like a bank account, just add more zeros. Be six million years old. And and then it becomes an unreal number. And still, I can, just, <laughs> uh, I can call it as I see it. Who cares? It's all on credit anyway, you big dummy. Well, I know. tomorrow in the morning, we've got Grimner comes on with the blues. We'll do the blues through a trivia game. Sometimes I get to play. Sometimes I get to watch. And then Hal Anthony comes on at 3 o'clock on the west coast of the USA with from behind the woodshed. And Monday, 7 o'clock on the east coast, PM, got grim leftovers. That's what he didn't finish on the freaker's ball or balls to the floor or balls to the wall or whatever he does on Friday night with whoever's with him. Still trying to get hands to do radio with Grim Mary. You know, balls to the wall is basically just a longer way of saying you got walnuts, but. Mm. Well, mm. remember remember when I was first new, Grum did a news program and he did the news in the mornings. Well, yeah. I'm catching the mornings. But, yeah. Well, he got bored of that. And then lately, about a couple months ago, he picked up this idea to, to do the leftovers thing. And I've been following him weekly. So I'm one of the devout followers of the new program grim leftovers see and i usually so, that's my saturday thing is if i'm home on a saturday oh. i catch up on podcasts so yeah and then they don't do the freakers ball podcast until he because there's you know late night saturday so he didn't get around to it till sunday sometimes so i don't even get the freakers ball unless i listen to it live i gotta wait till monday sometime. <laughs> yeah. And then Tuesday, me and Vinny come on with, we're doing um, In a Perfect World Together as partners again. Sweet. So, uh, uh, yeah, he's been coming on regular for about the last four four shows, I think. And then Wednesday, you've got your rocket. That's at uh, 1 o'clock on the East Coast on Tuesday. And then yeah. Wednesday, you got the rocket chair at 7 again. But I won't be here this East coming Coast. Wednesday because I have. glad I brought it up. Yeah, I have I have recalls that need to be done on my car. Ooh, well, better than a wreck that you didn't know to expect. Well, actually, because one of the recalls is replacing the lower control arms mm. on the front end, well, so it's like, what about, ooh, that needs to be tended to. What about the nut behind the wheel? The ah! nut behind, there is no fix in that one. Uh, There's just no fix then, in it. Thursday, I do in 20% off, all solo by myself like an adult. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, without, and uh, I I actually do not clown around as much and make, you know, voices and crazy shit. I do more of a, a serious outlook on how I see the world and what things have become, in my humble opinion. And then Friday at 1 o'clock on the East Coast in the daytime, P.U., We've got Vincenzo with uh, Pondergander, I believe. And what he'll yep. be doing, though, is a replay of an old show from his beginnings. He's on a treasure hunt for old gems. Bear ah. with Vinny. He, he's, not, he's not mental. He's just bent. And yeah. then <laughs> you come back. <laughs> then again, Friday at 7 on the East Coast, Grammy's Rocket Chair. Yep. And then Friday night, we got Grim and Moose with uh, Freaker's Ball, the corner of the whole damn RLM thing. Yeah. And there you go. And then outside of that, if you got anything left for these fine folk that pick up this crazy crap we do, Miss Mary, uh, thanks for being a hostage this week. I appreciated it. Didn't expect it. Oh, it was it. fun. 
I, good, I didn't good. either. I was going to be weed eating, but the wind said, yeah, yeah, yeah no. Yeah. <laughs> well, lucky me, because it's always good to have you pop up on a dork table and poke around at the government with me. It is fun. It is fun. Okay. Thank you very much. And Grimner, Roger Wilco, over and out. I'll send you notes in a few minutes. Bye. Bye.